Ah, New Year's Eve, the time of the year where everybody gets drunk, goes to dress up parties, and makes awful New Year's resolutions. What's my resolution? Well, I just won the lottery, and as a new billionaire, I figured I'd do what every responsible rich person does. Pay their taxes in full. Nah, who am I kidding? I'm gonna fly to the moon! So because I'm antisocial and don't go to parties, I figured I was gonna try and find a New Year's horror movie. It was a lot harder than I thought to find, but after hours of searching, I found the perfect movie. <laughs> Well, perfect's a subjective statement. The movie I found is Bloody New Year, a 1987 British horror movie that was nearly lost to time. Thanks to Vinegar Syndrome, we have a repaired cut of the movie for everyone to enjoy now. Normally I'd tell you about the movie before we watch it, but this movie is so weird and stupid that I've opted to surprise y'all with its plot. But for those who want some kind of a description for what we're about to watch, I'll describe it in three words for you. What. The. F but enough of my babbling. Let's end 2021 right by watching this so bad that it's good movie. Well dang, I didn't realize this was a musical. You better get used to the song though. It plays over and over and over. Would you look at that? It's 1959 and there's a party. Seems perfectly normal for New Year's Eve. Except it's not Mirror Attack. Now it's present day 1987, and we're introduced to our main bunch of teens. There's couple Rick and Janet, couple Leslie and Tom, and their single friend Spud. Hey wait, I thought this was a British movie. Why'd they name him after an Irish specialty? Our five teens decide to go to a fun fair, which by the way looks incredibly dangerous. Something tells me that boat shouldn't be doing a full 360. At the Tilt-A-Whirl, Spud sees some hooligans harassing a girl named Carol. Being the depressed single guy he is, Spud decides to be this girl's knight in shining armor. Spud ends up getting help from Rick, and as they're fighting the hooligans, the carousel operator decides to hop in and help the hooligans? So I guess the writers just wanted to bring in a third hole, because why in the world would this carousel operator be with the hooligans? Unless the carousel operator's their dad. Bloody New Year prequel. Tom turns off the ride's power and Rick and Spud help Carol escape. You know what? Now would be the time for a really long and extended chase scene that goes nowhere. Oh, okay, you're telling me that was the plan anyway? Gotcha. There's a long chase sequence that ends with all the teens escaping onto a boat while they have to fight off all three attackers. To put into context how random this chase scene is, it'd be like if I inserted a five minute portion of this video of me just editing the video. Not boring, but not entertaining and truthfully not helping the video go anywhere. Once on the boat, the teens can relax. Nothing quite says New Year's like sitting on a boat, am I right? Well, the riders think I'm wrong, so they make the boat spring a leak. But who caused the damage? Oh, just a rock. It's about drive, it's about power. The teens swim to an island where they find animal skulls, a plane crash, and a hotel. That's not the overlook. Oh wait, is that someone looking at them through a bush? It's just like those battle royale games the kids play nowadays. Everyone always hides in a bush. The hotel is decorated for Christmas, even though it's July, which the characters think is weird. Wait a minute. So you're telling me keeping my Christmas tree up because I'm lazy until July? is not normal. Well then screw me then. Each couple decides to go searching around the hotel. Yeah, somehow Spud and Carol seem to be a thing now. Gotta love that 80s horror, horny teenage logic. Tom and Leslie are hanging out when BAM, window face. Oh, and it just walks out of frame. Uh, what'd you say you saw, Leslie? There was a face at the window and then it was gone. Uh, no, Leslie. Actually, if we rewatch that, we see the guy walk away. You may need to get your eyes checked. Meanwhile, Spud leaves Carol to rest up when a maid brings her a blanket. Spud sees some singing bros and Rick and Janet start tongue fighting. That's pretty standard for these 80s movies, but I wonder why we're not seeing any more ghost activities or anything. Oh crap, scary mirror ghost! Everyone gets into dry clothes and has a drink before they find a theater that's mysteriously playing a movie. Ooh, ghost theater! And I'm not talking about movie theater ticket sales during the pandemic. The movie ends. I can't believe this. Come on, Rick, where's the film? Uh, guys, why are y'all mad? That's the end of the movie. That's like literally how movies work. They play some home videos and Spud commentates over it like a modern YouTuber. Hey, I was watching that. Spud gets scratched to death, apparently, and Janet turns into a runner and a track star. I'm on TikTok too much. Oh yeah, Rick runs after her too. Tom and Leslie go to a cabin to investigate the island and are attacked by a deadite. Wait, wrong movie. Instead, Leslie's attacked by a g -g 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 ghost fishing net. The fishing net must be a fighter because it gives Leslie a right hook, a left hook. Hell, it's giving her hooks everywhere. Tom just has to ask the net a question though and puts a stop to the net's reign of terror. All right, I'm glad that's over with. Now they can go back to searching the cabin. <laughs> Oh crap, a box monster! Get it, get it! Tom does. Oh, well that was anticlimactic. Ah! What grabbed him? Oh, so you're not gonna show us. Huh? Okay, the movie literally goes from Tom getting tagged by something below the frame to Rick and Janet walking. What is this movie? Rick and Janet get stalked by the Big Bang Theory's laugh track. Look. Uh... Yeah, I don't see it. Then the Evil Dead POV shot attacks them. Uh, 
Wait, what? Is my TV broken? You're telling me that's just the movie? On the plus side, I squeezed two Evil Dead references into one video. Rick and Janet reach the beach and the laugh track grows invisible feet. Suddenly they hear a plane crashing and an explosion. See, at this point, I can't really tell if the movie's just really weird or if I've had too much champagne. Carol follows a maid into yet another random cabin. Someone left the freezer open so it starts snowing. So she leaves. Everyone meets back up at the hotel and Leslie tells them Tom is in trouble. They go to look for Tom and suddenly the carousel operator appears. He fights with Rick. Okay, but like, how did he... Why... Why... <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, okay, Leslie's a zombie now or possessed or something. Sure, sure. Zombie Leslie kills the operator while everyone else skedaddles. Rick, Carol, and Janet get back to the hotel and lock it up. Rick goes looking for a weapon and Carol and Janet go to the bar. So they're safe, right? <laughs> Oh, come on! Uh, the hooligan who jumped through the bar is actually named Ace, by the way. Janet flees and the last hooligan jumps through a window. I've got several questions. Zombie Leslie comes from the ceiling and twists the hooligan's head fully around. Oh my gosh, look at that thing. It's going full 360. Leslie turns to Janet and stalks towards her. Rick appears. He's got a gun. Must have been those beans Leslie ate earlier. Tom shows up. Yay! He's hurt. Oh. Rick and Carol leave Janet to tend to Tom as they go explore. They find a military camp and a g -g 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 ghost pilot. Oh, his head exploded. Okay, sure. Back at the hotel, Tom starts talking weird and turns into a zombie. Janet books it and runs into an elevator. Tom grabs her leg, but the elevator starts to go up. The elevator says, give me a hand and takes off Tom's arm. Stop it. Stop it. I know I'm hilarious. Don't mind me. Just healing the world with comedy. Just just as always, that's me. Rick and Carol get back to the hotel and hear Janet screams. Janet tries to go down in the elevator, but the buttons decide to imitate their favorite music artist, Marshmallow. The elevator starts going down and everything is normal. Oh my gosh, that looks horrible. I'm not kidding y'all, that cheap latex looks awful. The elevator reaches Rick and Carol right as Janet is fully absorbed. How does that make you feel, Rick? No! Okay, well you didn't need to break my speakers. With all this ruckus, you're bound to attract enemies. And attract it does. Ace is back. Ace chases them, and Rick and Carol follow a maid they see into the kitchen, and the kitchen starts attacking. That soup must have been a pain in the ace to make. The kitchen does a weird cleanup scene where it reverses everything that just happened. Trust me, this will all make sense later. Maybe. Rick and Carol find themselves in a ballroom. No way! That's the room from the beginning of the movie! A zombie woman comes on stage and finally explains the entire movie. So basically on New Year's Eve 1959, the government released a radar experiment that crash landed on this little island with the hotel, and it created a time loop. So anyone who comes to this island dead or alive is stuck in the time loop and can't leave. You got all that? Good, cause I don't. Rick and Carol get chased by some more zombies into a room with a pool table. Rick and Carol ride the pool table like it's a cheap pop-up fair haunted house ride and it dumps them outside like freshmen getting kicked out of an upperclassman frat party. Don't ask me how I know what that's like. They go to the boat at the beach and right as they're about to leave, Rick hears Janet's voice. He turns to see her. Is she real? Nah, of course not. Rick falls into quicksand and the carousel guy comes back as a zombie. Hey, wait a second. What are you doing with that outboard motor? <laughs> Oh, the humanity! Would I be lying if I said that wasn't cool? Carol watches in horror, but before she can do anything, she gets pulled through the boat. Back at the hotel, we see five of the teens dancing, and Carol newly killed and stuck behind glass, adjusting to her eternal party that she's about to join. Help me! <laughs> now that we finished the movie, the song's kind of grown on me. Well, that's all Bloody New Year has to offer. It's a movie that I find really weird, yet I want to watch it every single year because it's so bad that it's good. All right, here we are, the end of 2021. If you'd like, count down with me to 2022. In five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Year! Welcome 2022, so long 2021, none of us liked you. And on that note, remember to subscribe and make your life the best it can be. All right, I'll see you all in the next one. Later. Later.